Forget you're tired and you're poor. We got a new immigration policy. The election hack is back for 2020. Kamala Harris gets a wink and a nod in Iowa. I'm Jamal Simmons, and this is why you should care. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The words of poet Emma Lazarus etched on the Statue of Liberty have long been interpreted as a welcoming sign for those seeking refuge in the U.S. and have been a vital part of our American ethos. But that might be changing now. Yesterday, the Trump administration unveiled a wide-ranging new rule changing green card criteria to more closely examine immigrants' financial resources. If a person is here legally and using public benefits like food stamps, Section 8 housing vouchers, or Medicaid, this new rule will make it more difficult for them to stay as permanent residents. If that person qualified for one of those benefits but chose not to take the money, they got dinged. Low credit score? Dinged. No college degree? Dinged. Experts say that could cut legal immigration in half. Here's why you should care. For years, many people concerned about immigration stated, I'm not against legal immigration, but we can't let people break the law. This new rule is not about people breaking the law to come into the country illegally. It's about whether people already admitted to the United States can become citizens if they are not wealthy or highly educated. Critics of this policy say those from poorer countries and persons of color are being targeted. The new top immigration official, Ken Cuccinelli, said the rule will go into effect starting in October and argues the principal driving it is an old American value, self-sufficiency. On NPR this morning, Cuccinelli offered a different version of Lazarus's poem, Give Me Your Tired and Your Poor Who Can Stand on Their Own Two Feet and Who Will Not Become a Public Charge. For the record, that's not, you know, what the Statue of Liberty says it all. Hackers from all over the world went to work cracking into voting machines at this year's DEF CON, a hackers conference held in Las Vegas. The Voting Village is an area in DEF CON that is outfitted with voting machines and designed for hackers to find vulnerabilities and breach them. It may come as a shock or maybe not, but nearly all of the machines there were able to get hacked. What's even more alarming is those machines are the same ones used in elections across the country, even though it's common knowledge that vulnerabilities exist. One of the only machines that proved to withstand hacking was a $10 million prototype created by the government's Defense Research Agency. Now the counter argument is that if the machines are not connected to the internet, they can't be hacked. But could the software installed on them be vulnerable? DEF CON is a magnet for lawmakers and Defense Department heads who are interested in learning more about the threat of cybersecurity. Here's why you should care. Democratic Senator Ron Wyden of Oregon was at the conference this year and said it's clearer than ever that paper ballots are a must to protect American elections and ultimately democracy. The Senate Intel Committee found Russians are actively trying to influence our elections and even infiltrate our systems. DEF CON is just one more piece of evidence about election vulnerabilities. Before the August recess, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell blocked the bill from coming to the floor, aimed at beefing up election security, and called it a partisan Democratic effort. If Hackers at a conference in Las Vegas can get into voting machines within a matter of days or less. What makes the naysayers think that bad actors can't do the same all over the world? Remember when Joe Biden got caught on camera saying we had to change our expectations because poor kids could do just as well as white kids? <laughs> well, that was an event sponsored by the Iowa Asian and Latino Coalition founded a few years ago to increase the political influence of Asian Americans and Latinos in the state. The organization hosted a series of candidates last weekend and endorsed one of them for president. You might have guessed, it wasn't Joe Biden. Instead, California Senator Kamala Harris, whose mother is Indian American, got the nod. Harris is also from San Francisco, whose population is primarily Asian American and Latino. The group said it threw its weight behind Harris because she is strong on issues and can take on the GOP contender, Donald Trump. Why you should care. The Asian and Latino coalition makes up only about 260,000 people in the state, but in just four years, the group has risen to prominence by successfully raising money and small donations. That can mean a lot in the late stages of the caucus race. People of color are having a bigger impact in elections, and in a close race, an endorsement like this could matter for Senator Harris. The California senator also got a flattering editorial from the Des Moines Register, the state's largest paper, calling her a formidable candidate with the backbone and smarts to be president. Harris has been polling at a distant third place in the Hawkeye State, as low as 11%. She could use all the help she can get. 
Thanks for watching Hill TV on YouTube. Be sure to click subscribe and hit the bell so you know when we post new videos and head to thehill.com for all the latest political news.